This is tyre pounding. You start by placing cardboard inside the tyre, then you fill it up with dirt and you pound it until the tyre bulges. Optical levelling. This is performed to define the height differences on ground elevation. To do this, you need a dumpy level on a tripod that gives you a perfect straight line into the distance to then mark on a levelling rod the height differences. Spirit levelling. This is performed using a spirit or tube level on the already packed tyres to ensure a straight line as every row progresses. This system can hold 1,700 gallons of water. There are three more on their way, so the total amount of water held will be 6,800 gallons. This particular one is made out of plastic, which is durable and resistant to rust and chemicals. Pre-made frames. These door and window frames were built in Taos, New Mexico by the Earthship Biotecture team. Then they were shipped to Todos Santos before the build began. Can walls. Cans are used to build some of the walls. They help fill up the mass and reduce the amount of cement needed. They are easy to lay, easy to learn, and of course, by using them, we are recycling garbage. But the ones underneath are not leveled correctly either. Glass bricks. To make these, you need two bottles of the same kind. Then you cut them with a cutting disc, wash them, and once fully dry, you join them with duct tape to make sure they are well insulated from moisture. The Earthship's Mexico team prepared over 7,000 glass bricks before the Taos crew arrived. He wants to do ecological development of some kind and looked on the web, found our site, came to see us, and wanted to do it. We have, a, our, our community there has a lot of demonstration buildings and, and people can come and really see what, what it is and he liked it. He wants to get into this and do this the same way we do, with our help, and he wants his three boys to grow up doing it. And so it's a good, the overall take on the whole project is, has got good motives, you know, all the way through and that's how we kind of select what to do. It's a lot like uh, we're, we're your guides and your serpents and you're climbing Everest. You know, that's kind of the way uh, we set it up. Uh, it's not, if, if somebody wants a home or a house, they have to realize that this is a little bit more than a home or a house. These buildings do everything for themselves and the way they do everything for themselves is not with, uh, poles and pipes, lines and, and centralized systems. It's a decentralized approach. Each building is a living, breathing cell that is getting everything that its inhabitants need from an encounter with the natural phenomena of the planet, like the sun, like the rain, like the gravity, like the wind. Uh, the condensation, the convection, all of the natural phenomena of the planet are studied and observed and built into these buildings so that they, through encounter with the natural phenomena, become uh, a living, breathing organism that takes care of people and doesn't need fossil fuel. This is a machine. 
like you go to the Ford Motor Company and you buy a Ford, you don't tell them, I want a Ford that's two story and has, uh, you know, eight wheels and whatever. You say, you pick from three or four choices and they are the people that design the automobile that goes down the road. That's what these things have to be like for people to even be able to deal with them. Porcupining. Before you add supporting cement, you need a bunch of nails around the tire so that when the cement is added, it has something to stick to. Power organizing module. This module has everything you need to manage and distribute your captured energy efficiently for all house appliances and utilities. Planter cells. These botanical cells filter grey water while acting as a watering system for a fruit, vegetable and herb garden. Since it is inside the Earthship and orientated to have sunlight, there's food production year round. Also, outside planter cells use treated black water for landscaping plants. Batteries. The energy generated by the solar panels can be used while it's being produced. To have energy during the night and when weather conditions are not optimal, we need to store that energy in batteries. Septic tank. A septic tank separates solids from liquids and uses anaerobic digestion by bacteria to treat the black water. By insulating it and adding heat, the process is accelerated. Energy. Photovoltaic cells are made from materials called semiconductors, mostly using silicon. Phosphorus atoms bond with the silicon ones, leaving one electron not bonded, resulting in negative silicon because of the prevalence of free electrons. On the other side of the solar cell, boron is added. Atoms also bond, but in this case one free opening is available for an electron, creating positive silicon. When these two sides are put together, a mad rush of electrons flow to the positive side. Eventually, equilibrium is reached and an electric field is created. This conducts electric current in only one direction. When light in the form of photons hits the solar cell, it excites the electrons and the field sends the electrons to the negative side. The metal contacts on the top and bottom of the cell draw current off, streaming towards another cell and so forth, creating a module or group of cells. When packaged into a frame, a solar panel is created. This will provide electricity cleanly and quietly for the next 30 years. As air particles collide against an object, each of them pushes with an amount of energy. The wind blades capture wind energy and start moving. They spin a shaft that leads from the rotor to a generator where magnets spin. If you have a conductor that surrounds those magnets, voltage is induced. Then it drives electrical current out through the power lines. At its essence, generating electricity from the wind or sun is all about transferring clean energy from one medium to another. The power generated by our sources goes to the power organizing module. This distributes energy to the batteries. When fully charged, it stops charging and sends the current for household usage. It also prevents overdraining of the batteries, making them last much longer. La información ahí está. La tecnología ahí está. La gente que quiere ayudar ahí está. ¿Qué falta? que agarren ustedes y se pongan a hacer vivienda inteligente, vivienda natural. Tienes que agarrar y lanzarte a hacer como puedas, como puedas, vivienda sustentable.
capture. Clouds move around the world propelled by air currents. For instance, when they rise over mountain ranges, they cool, becoming so saturated with water that water begins to fall as rain, snow or hail, depending on the temperature of the surrounding air. Water from clouds is captured by the roof and channeled to gravel filters and silt catchers. So when it reaches your cisterns, it's clean. The water from the cisterns is then gravity fed into a water organizing module that pumps and filters water into a pressure tank for consumption and house usage. Sewage. Every time we wash something or flush the toilet, we create wastewater. Wastewater from sinks, showers, baths, kitchens and washing machines is called grey water. Usually grey water will contain household chemicals like soap and detergents and easily degradable organic materials like fat and oil. Consequently, grey water is channeled through a filter or digester for grease and particles then sent into an indoor deep rubber lined botanical cell. A botanical cell is a built soil ecosystem that consists of various soil layers. The first layer, composed of gravel, to allow water to flow and provide good aeration or oxygenation, preventing nasty smells. At the top of the botanical cell, plants absorb water by the process of transpiration, where evaporation from the leaves enable water to be absorbed through the roots. Nearby root soil dries out. The water at the bottom slowly flows towards the drier soil near the plants. The flow allows phosphates and household chemicals to be completely filtered. The peat moss provides additional filtering, efficiently eliminating heavy metals, if any. At the end of the botanical cell, there is a grey water organising module which pumps the treated water to the toilets. Once the toilets are flushed, water now contains faecal coliforms and loads of organic materials. This is called black water, which goes to the septic tank. After the liquids are separated from the solids, the treated water is then channeled to an exterior landscaping botanical cell, feeding outdoor plants in the same manner as the grey water botanical cell. In short, earthships make very efficient use of the captured water by using it four times. First, you use it to wash then to water your indoor garden, then to flush the toilet, then to water your landscaped garden. Food production. To survive, grow and reproduce, plants need water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, oxygen and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. All of these are found inside the earthship, allowing many edible plant options to grow in your botanical cell. In short, Earthships can grow food year-round by providing sunlight all year, protection for the plants from extreme conditions like frost, an automatic watering system, a good soil composition, and nutrients from grey water like nitrogen and phosphorus.
At the end, earth ships are structures that are built using recycled materials, take advantage of natural phenomena, produce goods and use technology, creating beneficial contributions to environmental issues like the following. 1. Energy consumption. Fossil fuels supply around 90% of the world's commercial energy. This has to stop soon. Earthships reduce energy needs to a minimum by not needing central heating and air conditioning. By generating their own clean energy, they contribute to minimize global warming. 2. Water consumption. The water you normally get from the grid is pumped from lakes, rivers and underground water, often travelling long distances for human usage, consuming a lot of energy. United Nations has pointed out that by the year 2025, 50% of the global population will have water scarcity problems. With Earthships, you harvest your own water, so it's a safe net, plus you help our planet by reducing global warming and water scarcity. 3. Sewage The sewage systems around the world are inefficient. Normally we don't separate grey from black water, and in most places there aren't any water treatment plants, so it goes directly to rivers, lakes and the sea. Earthships use water in such a manner that there is no actual discharge. Your wastewater will never leave your property, meaning you do not pollute nearby rivers, lakes or the sea. 4. Food consumption. Global agriculture uses 60% of the total fresh water in the world. Food production today has to be technified to meet the large demand, resulting in burning fossil fuels, using chemical nutrients and pesticides, therefore emitting greenhouse gases, polluting soil, water and the product itself. Moreover, food is regulated by the economic market, making you vulnerable to shifts in prices and availability. Earthships produce food year-round, reducing expenses in family economy, health risks associated to pesticides and contaminants where food is grown, CO2 emissions by less fuel consumption, for example transportation for food imports, and water consumption for food production. 5. Wastes Everything we consume is a potential waste, because nothing is useful forever. Some materials no longer used don't degrade, occupying space and contaminating in several ways. In the year 2000, the US, for example, generated 320,820,972.84 tonnes of waste from households, gardens, parks, as well as commercial and institutional entities. Earthships use materials like tyres that otherwise would have little or no use at all. So, in conclusion, Earthships help our economy and are beneficial for local, regional and global environmental problems. If you get involved and spread the word, you can really make a change.